Hey family, it's your pastor. Hope all is well today. <clears throat> Hope everyone is taking great care of themselves. Um, this flu bug is out and uh, people are recovering from it. So please take your emergency vitamin C's, um, echinacea, golden seal, all those kind of things to build your immune system. Um, I'm so grateful to come to you tonight and we're still talking about soul winning and winning souls. I have been without words in trying to as I keep ministering and saying that, and I hope you all get what I'm saying. I'm very full in the spirit. I understand direction, purpose, and clarity better than I've ever understood it. I understand assignment uh, better than I've ever understood it for me personally and for this house. It is my hope, my desire that uh, the saints follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not trying to do anything, push anybody anything or anywhere that isn't something I've experienced or I know God will work in our favor. If I were to share personally with the family, it's after 20 years, the things that I have watched God supernaturally and miraculously do in my personal life, in my family's life, and in the ministry, um, I am fully persuaded that I understand his route, his assignment. Uh, his principles, and I am giving myself over to that even more to understand it even the better, but to bring clarity to his people. So um, there's, a, there's many evolutions that we've gone through as a ministry and yet striving extremely hard to remain true to the things that are most important to God. And the things that are most important to God are souls and the kingdom of heaven. And so in the process of that, while we know that we have made feeding the poor and the less fortunate a priority because that is important to God, winning souls is the next most important thing, that we are light, we are sought in the earth in order to win souls. I think it's necessary, and if I don't, I'm not doing it today, but it, within time, that we truly understand even the depths of hell and what it is and that there is no afterlife, that there's, there's only a life of torment, <clears throat> that there's no such thing as purgatory. Uh, judgment belongs to God. And from the time we take our last breath, we stand in judgment before the king and he decides where we spend eternity. I don't think it's talked about enough. I don't think there's enough emphasis on it. Therefore, um, we kind of walk our walk haphazardly lightly, um, almost without fear, meaning reverence to God and who we truly give accountability to. And because of our phenomenal day of social media, which has its negative and positive impacts, um, people are able to decide how much truth they want to believe or not. People are able to decide who they want to follow or who not. Um, all of these things are not scripture. Uh, when God gives you a shepherd, he gives you one shepherd that is accountable to your soul. Scripture says that though you may have 10,000 fathers, uh, instructors, not many fathers in the gospel. So many people can teach you. That's what instructor does. But a father nurtures you, guides you, gives you wisdom and knowledge because a father understands a child's destiny. I'm saying all that to say that I need us to embrace what God is doing in this house under this mantle and under the accountability he's given us to, to buy into it, give your whole heart into it because there is a pathway that he's paving for us that is carried from the mantle, from the head all the way down. That's the way it works. So I want to talk about soul winning as God is asking us to be light and to be sought and to see clearly purpose and assignment in 2020. Purpose and assignment 2020 is for us to be light and to see clearly that we have been called, handpicked, chosen by God, redeemed, washed by the blood of the Lamb, to be something of hope, of light, of clarity, of wisdom, of knowledge, of direction to a world that is walking in darkness. So let's go to the word very quickly as we're going to do your own we're going to do the uh billy graham as well but let's go to the word really quickly as i kind of set this pace uh let's go to john 15 a very familiar passage of scripture but i'm going to start at the fifth verse the scripture says jesus was making the disciples understand 
what's happening, why he's calling them, who they are to Christ, that you're not called, as I repeat over and over, you're not called to be a part of a membership or a social group or a hip thing or the latest move. You have been called to a kingdom assignment with kingdom connection. Your umbilical cord is from here to heaven to understand your purpose and the outcome that God has already preordained for your life. So, <clears throat> excuse me, John, excuse me, Jesus, I had to say to them, I am the vine. It's me. It's me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. You are an extension of me. You are the branches and he that abideth in me, he that keeps walking with me, staying in the truth with me, understanding who I am. It is not important for you to understand the latest and greatest what's happening in the world or even in other ministries. I must see clearly who I am as an extended branch of Jesus Christ because there's something I offer that nobody else can offer because he's called me and fashioned me and formed me and allowed me to live a life until I was able to accept him to be who I am. So the East of Jesus said, I am the I am the I am the tree and, and the vine and ye are the branches. And he that abideth me and I in him, the same, the same bringeth forth much fruit because that's who I am. Jesus is saying, this is who I am. I am a vine and I bring forth much fruit and you're a branch that should do, supposed to do, anointed to do, called to do, birth to do the same thing to do nothing but bring forth fruits of righteousness like me. And if you stay in me, this is what you're going to do. Now, when you see clearly that my definition of a woman, it doesn't come from the women of this world. My definition as a woman, it comes through scripture and what God have asked me to be. So my job, is to give myself to the Father so he can teach me what type of fruit I'm supposed to produce as a woman at every stage, in my married stage, in my children and motherhood stage, in my business stage, in my pastoral stage. That's my story. But you have your own. And so you don't give yourself over to following folk. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't give yourself to following people. You give yourself to following Jesus. You give yourself to following Jesus. That's how you'll know what kind of man you're supposed to be. That's how you'll know what kind of woman you're supposed to be. So that I can bring forth fruit much fruit. When you stop looking like a daughter of Zion, a daughter of the king, you're following the wrong people. It's not Jesus. When you stop walking as a man of God in principles and honor, you're not staying abiding in him. I have no desire to look like, act like, be like things, images of this world. That is not my desire, but my desire is to stay within the realm, within the glory, within the beauty of holiness that he's called me to as an extended branch of being a child of the king. Don't get this twisted. See clearly. He said, this is who you are. So he that abideth in me will bring forth much fruit fruit of kindness, gentleness, fruit of hospitality, fruits of dignity, fruits of substance, character, morals, scruples, values. This is who you begin to get shaped to be when you abide in him. He says, so you are branches of me and, I've, and, and if you stay with me, you will bring forth much fruit for without me, you can't do it. 
So you can't, as I say all the time, and I will never stop, you can't mix this. I cannot take righteous manna from heaven, instructions from heaven, and then try to salty it and mix it with influences and things of this world. I can't do it. I can then no longer do a kingdom assignment because without Christ, I can do nothing. So now I want you to see the buildup. If I see clearly that I am a branch of Jesus Christ and that if I abide in him, I will continue to bring forth much fruit, then church, what happens is you become light in the midst of darkness without even trying. And then what happens is, saints, people are drawn to you because they want what you have. They covet your character. They covet that you're different. They covet your innocence. They covet your pureness. They covet your ability to give answers of clarity and peace that in the midst of arguments, others are not able to do. They covet that, and then the world, sheep, are drawn to that. And hear me when I say, even evil influencers will be drawn to your uniqueness to bring something they cannot bring. That's when you start bringing forth fruit. So now you become this magnet. People want to go to lunch with you. People want you on their team. People want you to work for them. People want you in their environment because you're bringing something that is rare, that is peaceful, that is kind, that is loving, that is gentle, that in the midst of all this chaos and demonic prejudices and hate, you bring something we can't find. And it's because you abide in the Father. Okay, so let's stay with the word. Now, let's go to Proverbs 11 and 30. So then scripture tells us in Proverbs 11 and 30, for the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that when it sows is wise. So this that we're journeying into, seeing clearly who we are, and the ability to win souls, it really no longer becomes a task, but the righteous is a tree of life. So your lifestyle that you have lived in the midst of darkness and people, it automatically will draw people to you. I'm gonna read that verse again, Proverbs 11 and 30. It says the, the fruit, cause I'm in this branch, I'm an extension. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. People want to eat from you. They see the fruit that's coming from you and they want that and they want to be in the presence of that so they're picking your brains all the time they're asking different things all the time because you're giving something that is life he said so, so. then god begins to, to draw souls and that wisdom is coming from the branch of your father and because you're abiding in him listen to me and because you're abiding in him, he'll give you discernment of how to speak to people. He'll give you discernment of wisdom of what to say to people. You cannot win souls except you abide in the Father because the Father gives discernment of heart and how to heal hurting souls. So this is just your words of wisdom from your pastor today as we continue to embark upon how to win souls and being light, this is who we are. We see clearly that we are extended branches of Jesus Christ and we are light and we are sought in the earth, a hurting earth, a blinded earth, a hurting people, people walking in darkness that are looking for light. Be encouraged tonight. May you, may you find the joys of being a branch of Jesus Christ. May you embrace the uniqueness of being branches of Jesus Christ. May you take great pride that you are something that the world is looking for. Shine, be bright, be light, and be blessed tonight.